Hello and welcome back to the channel. Thought I would do something a bit different today. It's Mother's Day today, so happy Mother's Day to everybody out there. Um, bit of a strange one for me because my mum and dad are away, so I haven't got my mother to go and visit. Uh, my partner's at work till this afternoon and every other Sunday I don't have my daughter. Um, she stays with my partner's um, sister for the day, so it gives me every other Sunday a day either with my son or to myself to do a few jobs on uh, on the cars. But this weekend as well, with it being Mother's Day, I don't have my son either. So I'm on my own and I've got my two best pals with us. He's away up there, Hunter. So I thought, well, what should I do? What's to do? And I thought, well, I might as well visit my next best thing to my mother is go and see my grandmother. But my grandmother lives about three miles away. But the tracks, these woods that I walk down every day at work do lead through to a place called Bedleton, but it's at the far end of Bedleton. So I'm going to attempt a few little shortcuts and a few little places that I used to visit quite regularly as a child, and I'm going back, like, over 20 years now since I've been to some of these places. I don't even know if any of these shortcuts exist anymore or if they'll work, and especially after Storm Arwen, there's a hell of a lot of places around here that... Um, simply impossible so i may end off walking around to do a shortcut and make things ten, ten times harder but i just sort of fill the afternoon in and i've got the two dogs i need to take them out they need a good walk um we're just going to take my time with the old boy like i say he's coming up nine I'm just going to take my time because it is absolutely glorious this morning i'm in shorts and t-shirt for the first time flies flying about it really is springs in the air all the trees are beginning to bud fantastic best time of the year Absolutely love spring. Winters, we won't really get them anymore, do we? Yeah, so we'll, we'll have a bit walk on. We'll see what what, I, what, what, what even I recognise from all these years ago. I'm just coming up to some little area here now, what we used to call the burn. Obviously, it's just basically like, like a ford, you know. Uh, we used to come down here and ride, a, when it wasn't on too much of a high flow, and ride across them on our bikes and... Uh, you'd hit the moss, like, like the algae at the bottom of it, and it would be like ice. And it would be a challenge to see who could ride all the way through from the top of the hill down the dip without actually coming off through the water. And as you can imagine, on hot days like it is today, we decided to have ourselves a dip. And if our parents found out that we had been in the rivers or in the burns, or, and quite often my dad used to be down here walking the dogs, and if he caught one in them rivers on my own unattended, well, that would be hell on. Yeah, this has changed a little bit since I was here. Honestly, it must be 20 years ago. We'll swing the camera around. There's two ducks down there on the burn. It's like a big valley. You go down, there's a train track just up there. And here we go, there's two little ducks on the burn. See what the pup does. I'm just going to grab his ball in case he decides to go for them and get his attention. Leave it. Leave it. Ah, this was what we used to call the burn. The water quite often here used to flow across this but obviously it's low at the moment and this was it here might let the dogs have a little dip if they want them to it's that one down there he's not overly keen of water at the moment when i'm still being young but the big one will go straight in i'll just pause it see if we can get them in go and get it go and find go and find in there good boy hunter Good boy. Yeah, well, I did manage to get the dogs in, but uh, big lad here decided to, on his leader, jump in as well after the puppy's ball, and guess who went straight in? Only by my feet, but now my feet are nice and wet to have to do pff, at least probably six mile return. But hey ho, but that's this lovely valley down here. That was the burn, and as you can see, I hate standing underneath these things. Don't trust them at all. And there's the train line just up there. Honestly, I have not been up this track for 20 years. If this is boring stuff for you, just turn it off. Certainly not car related. But at the same time, I want to try and make my channel car related slash just day to day vlogging life. Really, like, obviously I'm not going to record walking around uh, shopping centres. But, you know, this is just something a bit different. I mean, um, a few people have mentioned on the channel. I'll just uh, turn this round. That they really enjoy watching my channel due to the fact of ill health or disabilities that they can't get out of the house and stuff. And I think, well, what better way is that to, you know, sit and watch things like this rather than sitting watching somebody trawl on with a car day in, day out. 
yeah, I know, fair enough. It's a totally different ball game. Uh, two moments, it's just... It's like a quagmire down here, onto the rail line. Do you want us to film this bit? Two moments, this is going to take... Hunter, yeah, this way. Wait, Harvey, wait. Through the bog. Not that it matters, I can't get my feet much more wet. We'll get the big dog up here. Pop. Go on then, pop. Pop, here, Hunter. I don't want him being off. Two moments, I'm going to put him on the lead up for the train tracks. Hunter, here. Right, that's the pup stayed there. We walk up. Stop, look and listen. Perfect bit of advice, wait. Obviously, this is a disused train line pretty much. So don't worry. There's not going to be no locomotives coming along at 100 mile an hour. As you can see, they are talking about redoing this line and having to direct the Newcastle. It would be great if they did. It'd be fantastic. But with these rail lines, you can actually walk along up here and get to the main road and come out with the main road where we need to be. What I'm going to do now is knock the video off and have a quick look on maps to exactly where I am to see if I can carry on over there and up to see where that actually takes you. Because um, I'm, when we were younger on my bikes, we just used to think it was funny to ride, not on the rail lines obviously, along th this um, section here. We never actually went any further to up there. So we're going to have a look at some maps, but such a lovely area this really is. Yeah, so that's where across the train tracks. Like I've said, that line hopefully is in talks about getting put as part of the main line, not the main main line, but a, 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 a link line from Newcastle, which would be great to see this recommissioned. As back in the olden days, this used to be a proper main line. Where we are here, you may see over my shoulder. I'll put the other camera on. I don't know if you can see those little, they just look like little, but they're absolutely huge. Vents. What this used to be was a huge landfill site years and years ago it still stinks to this day it really does make you wonder about recycling i must admit because all that rubbish under this ground now and that's what all of those little turrets has one two three four five i don't know if you can see that six seven eight nine the closest one's just over there i may get some better come on hunter Get your ball um so yeah um i have never i must admit I've never been here in my life. I've been to those rail lines when we were kids and we used to ride along adjacent to the tracks on our bikes to the main road. This way is leading to a place called Hepscott. That's a little bit too far to where I need to be. So what I need to do on this track, I've seen two ladies, uh, and that's why I had to cut the filming off on the train lines. Um, uh, they said if I carry on along here and start heading left somewhere down here, but um, I've got the gist of where I am and I can recognise some buildings in the distance. Um, to where I need to be so as long as I can keep on the right direction I won't get lost but hey ho what a lovely place to get lost not that I can really get lost in my own area but you know what I mean you get the idea come on Hunter not going on there yeah them vents are all over that field it's somewhere I'm really not going to walk or go near with the dogs because I most certainly don't want to get close to those uh, um, fume vents obviously that vents all the obviously all of the rubbish that's been compacted down over the god knows how many years and god knows what was in amongst that rubbish uh, all those fumes are coming out as it decomposes. Not that I need to tell you guys how a landfill site works. Um, but yeah, just thought I'll make this into a bit of a walk slash waffle video. There's no real constructive uh, work being done as such. Um, but uh, yeah, I just, I just want to go through a few things I've been doing there. Uh, yesterday, we had a day in Morpeth. Some of you who are friends with us on Facebook or whatever, you'll have seen. It's a great place there, I've mentioned this before. Morpeth, Morpeth Motorcycles. It's just like a motorcycle repair shop, sales place. But they've got a lovely cafe in there. And it is fantastic. Lovely. I mean, what did we get? I got a huge double bacon double cheeseburger. My partner got a cheeseburger. We've got my daughter. The sausage and chips. All chunky homemade chips. Lovely. Onion rings, relish, side salad, you name it. Two cans of pop. I got a cup of coffee. What else? I got something else. I got something else as well. Uh, Sixteen pound. Anywhere else in Morpeth, you'd be lucky to get two cups of coffee and uh, one like brownie or something or a shortcake to share for sixteen pound. Now it is nice to see in such a sort of posh place where reasonable places are, and it was lovely. We well, sat outside at the front. They've got seats indoors. And we sat outside at the front on a day like this. It was beautiful. They have tables and chairs outside. And naturally all the motorbikers. There's obviously motorbikes the main cut through from all the brilliant motorbiking roads up at Rothbury and all around there. 
uh, you cut through Morpeth, so it's a great stopping place to for like communal meeting up and stuff like the motorbiking clubs. Um, so naturally, you've always got people coming and going with the loud motorbikes and stuff. And me, oh, I didn't have my son, but my daughter, she loved all that. She was straight away uh, pointing out the noise of the motorbikes and so on. I'm just looking across in the distance there. Yeah, this path, sorry to stop what I was, but this is what the path that we're coming onto here. Now, it either heads up there, which I don't want to be going that way. That's towards Morpeth, what we're just talking about. I want this way into here. I've not been here before, but I obviously see it cuts through. Now I'm going to take this path because unfortunately that means I'm on this field, which was the old landfill field. Um, and I can see buildings over there and in the distance. You won't be able to see, but I recognize that exact, I know exactly what that is. So I want to be heading towards that. So we're in the middle of nowhere here. Never been here, never been on this in my life, ever. So, definitely a good experience for a Sunday morning. But those buildings over there are roughly where I need to be heading towards. So if I can get down that dip somewhere, somehow, happy days. And actually, here's what I'm talking about. One up close, because there's just one there, and there was loads over there. And this is what I'm talking about, these. Let's have a little look, but I'm not going to touch. So what actually does it say? Head office. Business Park, Aberdeen. And that's these massive vents I'm talking about that go right down. Obviously they're locked. And obviously when the pressure builds up with the with the gases un, un, underneath, uh, that's what, the, obviously you're coming open and I get access to valves and they run all the way along those green boxes. Um, so yeah, back to me. I'll just switch the camera. So I was, I'm tempted to let the old dog off, but I'm too far away from anybody in case he decides to not come back. So we'll just stick with the little one for now. I haven't really come very well prepared. Uh, I only bought a bottle of water. Um, begin to need the loo, but I don't think anybody will be watching around here. <laughs> That's going to be coming up next. Um, yeah, so that was I was on about. Yeah, about Mor Morpeth. A lovely day out in Morpeth, if anybody of you is a local. Nice walk down the rivers, park, ducks. Like, uh, like the, they used to have the rowing boats on. Um, sh like nice quirky little shops. Which is what I hate when you go to places like Metro Centre and Newcastle. You could go to Newcastle one, uh, in the morning and say Manchester or Liverpool in the afternoon. The main city centres in there. Just the same shop over and over again. Where with Morpeth, it's, uh, it doesn't get us wrong, there's still yeah, normal branded stuff. Um, but uh, there's nice, nice little quirky places. It's just a bit different. Nice place to go. So anyways, let's do a bit of chat on cars. No, you're not a car, it's something I seen yesterday. Can anybody remember the, the Ford Couriers? They were based on a Fiesta, yeah? Uh, y Reg 2001. I've seen a Ford Courier. Needs both sills done, but I don't do much of the way of welding, but them Fiestas were that common for sills. It's like these like, companies we deal with for body panels. Two sills for them can't be very much money. Um, but it's been converted into a little day van, I think professionally, because uh, it's got the pop-up roof on it. Um, it's the turbo diesel, the 1800, the old Ford 1800 diesel, fantastic engines they are, especially the one with the turbo, mind you, <laughs> you get very, very little power out of the turbo, but they're a damn side better than the normally aspirated 1800s, um, little timing belt on them to do, because the bottom half's chain driven, so they're no bother, and let us know on, on the channel, while we're on the lines of talking here, well, I've had a little bit of an itch that I want to scratch at the minute and it's to do with the price of fuel at the moment and you'll have all seen everybody doing this seeing people at supermarkets just pouring in veg oil and stuff into that old diesels now I fancy buying an old diesel that can run I'll have to do my research and I'm, I'm not sure there's all different ones like on the PSA the XUD unit you've got to make sure you have the Bosch pump I think it is I don't think the Lucas pump likes the veg oil and stuff so these Ford engines I'm not that fully experienced on the, the pumps that are on them um, this on a wire ridge will definitely be the direct injection one um, not the ones where they went to the TDC eyes and I'm just fancying having a look and just doing a bit of a it would be nice to get something like that because A It'll be a little day van. It'll be nice to take the dogs out in. Somewhere you can never lie down. If I go out, you know, I love coming to places like this, but like when the, with the price of fuel being so high, um, I really can't justify it. Uh, like I've mentioned, my two Jeeps, the 3.7 V6 petrols, I just simply cannot decide just to jump in 
and go up to like you know 30 40 50 mile it's costing us like 30 40 50 pound you know um so i was fancying getting something like this little day van somewhere i can take the dogs put the bike the the, the kids and stuff in the only downside of it unfortunately unless i haven't seen in the back is it's only a one seater as in like the driver plus one passenger so it would only have to be a thing where i'm taking my son out or my daughter plus the dogs on my own uh, that's the only downside of it but it's got the old style engine in a couple of sills on it i think he said it might need a spring um i'm tempted i'm tempted i might go and have a look at it let us know your thoughts on this one well on the lines of fuel i've already said about going to costco but maybe that's not an option for everybody because it might not be near you but something i just want to put into the mix about exactly what i'm doing now exactly what i've just been speaking about so i feel it's a relevant time to mention it now as you know me where we normally always go out miles in the car like if you remember me l200 videos i don't know if i did much on the beginning of my channel but every weekend every saturday and sunday would be up to otterburn kildar you name it finding far out white places places um and that was fine then because it would cost like 20 30 quid a diesel diesel by the way not me petrol jeeps um now we can't do that because obviously the vehicles i've got and the price of fuel so what i'm thinking because what i'm doing now is if everybody just did i mean it's useless me saying this to like the, the pittance of people that watch my channel but if everybody say for the month of february february where the hell did that come from march or april coming up uh, just said right we're not going to go out in the car i mean especially if you live in an area like me this is under yeah if you just live in an area like this just spend like for a month on your days off whatever whether or not you have weekdays weekends off whatever make sure you spend your days off and just stay in your local area go for a walk have a barbecue in the garden if the weather's nice go and visit friends locally walk ride a bike so i don't know whatever and if everybody just put that foot down what are these things they call in different months where people do like was it dry january and I don't know, you know, all these things like National Bloody Haircut Day and all this crap. Why, if people just put their foot down and went, right, month of April, naturally everybody has to work and make money, you can't not go to work. But if everybody boycotted these fuel stations, uh, you know, especially the ones ripping people off, and says, right, we're not going to use fuel, we're not going to actually use as much as we normally would, and then what they would notice is, like, what happened in the middle of COVID, but, uh, yeah, what happened in the middle of COVID nothing the fuel prices dropped to a record low didn't they so you know a little bit of an idea that's why i'm doing this as well apart from having to walk across to see my grandmother could have easily jumped in the car like i've said it's a big engine jeep but it doesn't uh just to drive a few miles you know like six mile or whatever it's not gonna break the bank but now nah, I, I just think it's a better idea to uh if everybody does that a little bit makes a big difference and especially if everybody starts doing it it would be great to see. It would be absolutely fantastic to see everybody just go, right then, keep putting the fuel prices up higher and higher, and we'll just simply stop using it. It's not that essential to go in the car for everything. You can have a good time. Quite there's loads of beautiful places around the UK. You know, it would be nice to, for people to do that. So I'm going to clock out now, because I've got no idea what's ahead of this from here. So if there's anything more interesting to... Um, to comment on i will if not i might just wait till i get to my grandma's and do a final round up and finish the video there um one thing i would like to do a shout out to weather spoons in bedlington the red lion is our shit i just I rang them up and i just said do you have does they've got a huge back garden like it was seats and everything and i says do you do you have do you allow dogs in no we don't only guide dogs load of crap because the whole point of a pub like all, especially traditional pubs, what that used to be, was so exactly like this. A man can go out for a walk with his dogs, or woman, and you can come and you can get a refreshment, a drink, something to eat, and sit outside as long as it's not indoors. So weather spoons, sort your act out. Load of rubbish, that really disappointed. I was hoping to get a pint. <laughs> so anyways, you just can do one because I'll just go along to the pub along the road. So there we go. Sorry about that rant. I'll be back to you soon. If I don't drop my phone on the floor. Right, we've made it. I might not end it quite here because I'm planning on going up and try and get a pint. But like I've mentioned, I can't get into weather spoons, so we'll see if I can get into a different one with the dogs. So I've made it to my grandma's. 
the same track that I always used to go through, they've decided, shock horror, to start building, well, in the process of making plans to build somewhere. So I got right through to where I needed to be within spitting distance of where I need it to be and they put all these big fences up yeah so there was all these big fences up Harvey started to start to bark you th this is a thing with spring our spaniels you'd think they'd be tired wouldn't you he's not coming up nine and he's not tired um so yeah they put these big steel gates up and I thought to myself I could actually see the gap what I, where I needed to be through but they'd put all these gates around the whole field I couldn't believe it and the only other way around this was to turn around and walk at least 20 minutes back in the opposite direction onto the main road and then another half an hour back round and I thought there's no way I'm doing that no way so I spotted a gap under the fence and him the size of a horse managed to get underneath of it obviously he slipped through no bother so what did I do what, what, what did I do I thought well if Harvey can fit under it I can fit under it. Yeah, a grown man crawling underneath the fence. But I did. I got under. I've got nettle stings up my leg. I've got mud. I don't even have this. Mud all up my shorts. Nettle stings everywhere. Scrapes up my arms. Uh, so, yeah, I got under, though. We got through. But, like, literally, underneath that fence. And I'll, uh, actually, as it happens, I bumped into a good uh, f uh, friend who I haven't seen for years. And she had a Springer Spaniel puppy exactly the same age within a matter of days of hunter so they stood and had a good play for 20 minutes so kind of waste pointless me saving that 20 minutes going under the fence but hey ho and i've got my grandma's uh so here i am here i wish my garden was like this just a little bit of family history for you i practically grew up here in this house and in this garden there used to be a little shed on the side of that one and i used to spend every night in there banging on with hammers making well, what I thought I was making stuff. Uh, there used to be a greenhouse about here. It, it's been redeveloped slightly since. Uh, I used to go in the greenhouse with my granda, and But mainly there was the shed. And I spent hours in there. Fixing bikes, doing God knows what. There was a garage here. And when I first started driving, like I've mentioned in my video a couple of... Or whenever it was, about, about my one litre polo. I actually had my one litre polo stored in this garage here. I passed my driving test, I was in sixth form at school, which is across the road from this house. Um, and I come straight away from getting out my driving truck, that's car, with my certificate, straight into here to that garage, got the car out. Of course, picked four of my best friends from school, as you do. <laughs> and we went for a spin up the road in, in the car. But of course, it was half three and you couldn't even get moved for school traffic. So there you go. So yeah, so here, I'm going to go and try and get a pint. Godma doesn't want to be on film, but she's just there. There. <laughs> so, yeah. Um, I'll come back to you if I manage to get into a pub anyways. Well, as promised, I found a pub. You, Witherspoons. I've just counted there was 25 tables outside, 25 benches, and they don't even want anybody to sit in with a dog. Lost your trade. So, nice bowl of water. Yep, I was absolutely devastated at the end of that video. I'd pushed me luck all day with the phone and the battery was just hanging on by 1% and you couldn't have timed it any worse that the minute I was just about to lift the, the phone up to the table to show me pint, the phone went off, didn't it? And of course, I was in bed and I had to walk all the way back before I could charge it. So yeah, obviously that's the end of the video. I hope you enjoyed it. It's a bit higgledy-piggledy here and there, but it was somewhat different. It... You know, bit of talk about cars, bit of walking around my local area. At the end of the day, if you don't like it, please just say. Um, same with like the caravan and stuff, family stuff. Yes, it's car at Garage Northeast, but I'm trying to just make it something for anybody to watch. And at the end of the day, nobody lives in a... Wait, saying that it's six o'clock at night and I want to get home. Nobody lives in a garage. There's more to life than cars. Cars are good hobbies, it's my job, but you need to get away from that. Uh, so I hope you enjoyed it. So I'll leave the video there. Please, please, if you did enjoy it, hit the like button. If there's anything you want to say about it, comment on it. And if you haven't already done so, please hit the subscribe. Catch you later. Bye.